what's going on guys it's omniarch and today i'm bringing you a brand new video where i'm going to be giving you 16 tips that you need to know if you're a brand new player in age of apes now really quick i want to thank you guys for all of the support on my first age of apes video it went really really well and i really do appreciate everybody who told me that the game looked awesome that they downloaded the game using my link in the description it meant a lot to me to see people just actually excited to play something new now the next thing that i have to mention is that while we are all excited to be celebrating the official launch of age of apes it is worth noting that this game is very very new and a lot of things can change in this game over time so if there are any major changes to the tips that i give you in this video i will pin a comment in the comment section below and finally these tips are in no particular order so it's not like we're going to start with basic to advanced or anything like that all of these tips are important and i they're they're in the order that they showed up in my brain and lastly some of these tips are going to be for people who have never played a game like this before right so i know some of you watching probably have played other games similar to this a couple of the tips are going to be for people who are new to this genre entirely so without further ado tip number one is going to be spending your building speed ups on the correct buildings what does this mean well as you know with any building in the game you can speed up that construction using speed ups but there are some buildings that are way more important to speed up than others the five buildings that are the most important to speed up are the four troop training buildings and the research lab the reason for this is because you cannot perform research or train troops if those buildings are currently being upgraded so every single minute that the building is going on for those buildings you are losing out on a minute of researching or training or something like that this is a classic example of an opportunity cost so by not speeding up a building you're actually losing out on the troops or the research progress that you would have made had that building been sped up immediately now of course always wait for alliance helps but we'll talk more about that later tip number two is always buy a second builder queue for 200 cds now in other games there are ways to get two builders permanently so far from my experience in this game i have not seen a way to do it i don't see it in the vip uh, rewards here there's building speed but i don't see it anywhere in here so what that means is that having a second builder is always important because it effectively doubles your building speed right because you can do two buildings at a time but at the time of recording this there's no permanent way to get one so you're going to be spending 200 shiny cds that's the premium currency in this game uh for a builder queue and i believe it's every two days uh, it might be two and a half or three days i still have a lot of time left but 200 cds to double your building time is crucial especially in the beginning of the game and there are plenty of ways for you to get for you to get those cds absolutely for free just by playing the game and 200 is not that much tip number three is a very basic tip and if you've played other games similar to age of apes then you'll have you'll certainly know this already but you always want to spend down your action points before logging off for any sustained amount of time action points as you can see they regenerate over time and this is the uh, the point system that is required in order to attack things out on the map so when you're attacking mutants and things like that doing rallies um, those things require action points they recover over time and so if you're about to log off for the night then you want to make sure that you spend all this down to zero so that way when you wake up it's all the way full this is also important because when you spend those points to attack mutants there are rewards that you get for killing those mutants and you're basically turning action points into tangible rewards that you need to progress in the game so spending them is very important tip number four is that you can choose the skill that you want to upgrade when you have that opportunity so in other games skills are upgraded randomly when you accumulate enough of the metals in this game you get to choose which of the skills you want to level up so it's not random you get to decide which is amazing i love this feature this is a quality of life thing so for example for rodriguez here i can either upgrade his excavation or i can upgrade his harvest time now obviously i can't upgrade his third or fourth skill because i have to level him up first but as long as you've unlocked the skills you can choose which one you would like to upgrade with the medals that you have available tip number five is always get to the very end of your daily 
daily quests and this may seem like an obvious tip right especially if you've played other games like this however this is way more important in this game than any other game like it and the reason for that is because this is the only way at the time of me recording this this is the only way that i know to get the the projector modules that you see here so you get it at 30 points you also get it at 200 points and these items are crucial to leveling up your holo projector leveling this up requires a certain number of these modules and leveling this building up can only be done with these modules and they can only be gotten from your daily quests and the reason you want to upgrade this building is because every time you do your food production and your iron production go up and every few upgrades your convoy level also goes up so in other games similar to this there are farms and there are uh, lumber yards and ways that you can generate resources over time in age of apes this one building does both food and iron and the only way to get more per hour is to get these modules and you're capped at two per day you can only get two per day maximum so if you're not finishing your daily quests then you're effectively cutting the progress of that building in half or if you don't even hit the 30 then you're just you're not progressing that building at all always do your dailies so tip number six and tip number seven are very closely related but let's start with tip number six and that is join an active alliance as soon as possible now again if you've played other games of this genre this may seem very obvious but if you're new to this genre this is important because alliances have what's called alliance research and this research will immediately give you buffs to your city so you're going to get an increase in building speed you're going to get an increase in research speed you'll deal more damage to the mutants out in the open field all the pve damage right there's tons of different research that an alliance can do and the farther along that they are the more benefit that you will have by being a part of that alliance the reason that you want to be a part of a uh, of an active alliance as opposed to a more passive one is because of what you just saw on the screen right there you see i clicked that bubble and it said that i helped everyone in need and so essentially when you upgrade a building or you start healing your hospital or you start a research at the research lab it will give you the option of asking your alliance for help and of course you should do this and what this does is for everybody else in the alliance they see that bubble over their alliance treehouse every time one of your alliance members clicks that bubble to help out you the amount of time that it takes to do that upgrade or that healing decreases by a small amount so if you're in an active alliance then as soon as you request for help on something it will go very very fast because there will be an active number of people online at virtually all times so not only do you get the benefits of the alliance research but if it's an active alliance you actually will progress in the game faster just because of it now this is relating to tip number seven because tip number seven is this the first building that you should upgrade after leveling up your city hall is the alliance treehouse so you can get the max amount of helps so every time if you guys didn't know the city hall level is basically the cap for the rest of your city so right now my city hall is level 11 the rest of my buildings cannot go past level 11. so what that means is that my alliance treehouse is when i upgrade this to from 10 to 11 that means that i can go from my treehouse from 10 to 11. and what is this going to do well it's going to increase the number of times that my alliance can help me and this is important because by doing this one first you're getting that one extra help for the rest of the level, right? So as soon as this is done for the rest of level 11 of my city hall, every other building will have one additional help, which means everything else will go slightly faster because I chose to upgrade this building first, as opposed to anything else. Tip number eight has to do with donating to your horde rocket. This is very, very crucial. And this is an aspect of the game that is relatively unique to age of apes so what am i talking about well if you click on horde down at the bottom and you see rocket technology this is essentially uh, a very similar feature to the alliance research feature where you can donate and help your alliance along well in this instance you can donate specific items in the game whose sole purpose is to upgrade your entire hordes single rocket the way that this ties into tip number eight is that you should do the maximum amount of rocket donations every single day so that way you're guaranteed this uh, 80 donation chest reward every single one of these chests will give you honor coins and you can use these coins to buy speed ups or resources or things like that those are very useful 
but by doing all 80 donations every single day you're guaranteeing yourself a premium arena ticket and those tickets are how you are going to get your hands on some of the rarer fighters in the game you can use that premium ticket to give you a chance to get some purple or some yellow fighters in the game you can even summon them completely or you might just get some medals but these premium tickets are expensive they cost premium currency and they're very hard to come by so right now if i'm going to contribute to dedication one i'm using these uh, pieces of scrap metal and i'm donating and you can see the uh, the um, bar on the bottom is going up i have a lot of these the way that you get these items is from the rocket quests the rocket quests you will see over here it's on the left your rocket missions uh you should do these every single day your energy restores over time um and as you can see down here th this will give you like four of the scrap metal that i'm using this will give you 104 of the empty tin cans uh and those are useful for other rocket technology such as uh the dedicated i'm sorry not dedication one there's dedicated um this one uses the the empty cans so again doing all of the rocket missions will give you a lot of these items that you can use to reach level 80 and as you can see there uh, i did just go ahead and do it now it is worth noting that once you hit 80 you can stop donating and, and save them for the next day um however i find that it is possible to uh by doing the, the correct uh, rocket missions to get 80 donations every single day um as long as you're doing them so i don't see a reason to save them for the next day but you you could totally do that tip number nine is always use a food production a steel production and a gathering speed buff this is the most basic of tips if you've played any game of this genre but there are items in the game that will increase your food production and iron production and your gathering speed for a certain amount of time by a certain percentage so my gathering speed is 50 percent faster right now for the next six hours and four minutes my food production and iron production are both increased by 25 percent for the next six hours and four minutes and the way that you get that increase is simply from using a very common item in the game uh known as the eight hour buff or the 24 hour buff these are very good they're easy to come by and they instantly give you uh, more production which is super good you're going to need these resources eventually tip number 10 is going to relate to clearing the fog with your watchtower so if you guys didn't notice uh there is a ton of fog that is over uh, across basically the entire map and the way that you get rid of it is by sending your um your scouts over to these areas to basically clear the fog now if i go to send one of my scouts it takes him four minutes to get over to this uh fog tile however if i don't want to wait there is a way and i can even pick an even farther away tile let's pick uh let's say this one right here um if i want to clear this fog tile without waiting for my scout to get over there you can use 10 batteries which is one of your currencies here you can use 10 batteries and you immediately will clear that fog tile now you can only do this i believe three times and then you have to wait for it to uh rejuvenate you have to wait for that essentially that uh, ability or that power to come back over time and again this is incredibly useful because it saves you a lot of time but also um 10 batteries is not a lot right it's just it's just not a lot of batteries and so you're going to clear the map much much faster by literally just sacrificing 30 batteries every couple of hours you're going to get three free flaw uh, fog block clears so make sure you do that tip number 11 is never use your resource item tokens unless you absolutely need them as you can see this is my resource item inventory and i've got tons of food i've got tons of iron and because these are in item form they can actually be stolen from you if your city gets attacked what happens is if you look at your warehouse your warehouse will protect a certain number of these resources but anything beyond that capacity can be stolen by a stronger player who happens to just knock your city down this can happen when you're offline and so if you're using all of these items over and over and over again as soon as you're getting them you're basically converting converting them into safe item tokens into resources that can be plundered just by getting hit and you know spoiler the more resources you have in your city the more likely it is that someone's going to want to take a piece of it tip number 12 is to never never buy items in the regular shop the way that you get to the regular shop is you go down at the bottom you tap items and then right next to it there's a shopping cart here you can buy literally pretty much any item that you want 
for a certain number of premium currency of these shiny cds never buy here never ever ever spend your premium currency here because once in a while the secret shop will show up this is a building that you can construct and when it is around of course it's not around for the video but when it is around you will have the option of buying the same items uh that are of a random assortment for a much cheaper cost so it can be anywhere from 10 percent off all the way up to 60 percent off and again the items are identical in terms of their function so by waiting a little bit uh, and being patient you can get a much better deal on the same items uh by buying them from the secret shop uh the secret shop as opposed to the regular shop tip number 13 is incredibly valuable and what tip number 13 is is it has to relate to killing these mutants as you can see here it says strengthen by night and what this means is that these apes have been changed through radioactivity and that means that they will enter hyperactivity searching for loot everywhere at night so if you kill these apes at nighttime there is a chance that you get double the rewards so just to give you an example this is a battle report from a mutant that i attacked during the daytime and you can see the resources that i got here when I attacked the same ones in the nighttime, you do have a chance of getting double the loot by night. Now, sometimes you get something like this that says no additional loot tonight. And I uh, got two of them that get that got double. I would say the, the probability of it being double is probably somewhere around anywhere from 10 to 30 percent. Um, it, it seems pretty common but it doesn't cost any more action points to attack during the nighttime so you're better off waiting to attack mutants until nighttime so that way you have the chance of getting double the rewards now this is important and i have to do more testing for this but i entered a battle with a mutant at nighttime and it took me so long to kill that mutant but that by the time i killed it it was daytime and for that battle report there was no indication that it was taking place during the nighttime so the way that you can tell that you attack them at nighttime is because you either see the double loot or you see the text that says no additional loot but from the battle that i started during the night and during the battle it changed today it looked like this where there was no indication of it being nighttime so what that means is that it seems to me that the night condition must be met at the end of the battle so if you're going to do this try to do it on mutants that are a little bit weaker that way the battles go pretty quick and that increases your chances of it ending during the night phase tip number 14 also has to do with killing mutants and tip number 14 is always try to kill the highest level of mutant that you can at least one time because you get bonus loot for doing so you may have seen this when i went into my messages before but i have another favorited message here that says victory battle with level 13 white mutants i got a first blood reward so normally this is what the rewards look like it's very little sometimes you get a little bit more than this uh, but for a first blood you can see i actually got a medal for scott i also got some gene potions i also got some cds some premium currency right you get more rewards for the first time that you kill a particular level of mutant so you should always at least try to kill the highest one that you can possible at least once just so that way you get those rewards sooner tip number 15 has to do with the apes tavern and tip number 15 is always 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 accept the trades from the astronaut monkey i i don't know his name if they introduced his name in the tutorial i wasn't paying attention but you'll see the astronaut monkey on the right side of the tavern once in a while he comes every i don't know 30 minutes or so and he will ask you if you want to trade and it is always worth it i have never seen a trade that is bad like for example this one you get 12 hours of energy speed ups for only 10,000 iron 10,000 iron is very easy to get you might as well do this just to illustrate my point if we go into the regular shop which again you're not going to be using but uh, if you go into the regular shop the 12 hour energy speed up costs 120 shiny cds if you go into your, the resources tab you can see that 10,000 iron costs 25 cds so one way you could look at it is that i just got this item for 25 cds and that's a huge deal right that's an amazing deal i've seen him have some deals where it's give me 10,000 food for a 50,000 food token like obviously i'm going to do that so out of every single one that i've seen um every time you see that astronaut monkey always accept his deal even if you don't need what he's giving you right away you'll probably need it later so always accept now 
I did click the no thanks button once just to see what would happen. I wanted to see if it would bring me back to the screen with the option of purchasing it again. It doesn't. If you click the no thanks option, he goes away for 26 more minutes. So be very careful. And again, always accept it. I, I have yet to see an exception to that rule. So tip number 16 is a very basic one for this style of game, but it is incredibly important and I have to mention it here. And that is before you log off for any sustained amount of time, like before you go to bed or something like that, always, always, always send out some gatherers. So make sure you send out troops to gather food and gather iron. Also send out your scouts before you log off. So have them scout some very far away fog because it's going to take a long time, but it doesn't matter because you're not going to be online. So for example, if I were to log off right now, I'd probably search this fog over here because it's going to take a while. And of course, before you log off, make sure that you have both of your builders upgrading a building. Make sure that you have a research that is, that is happening at the moment. Make sure that you're training all four troop all four troop types and again i know that this is a very basic tip but if you fail to do all of those things before logging off your efficiency in this game is going to go down a lot because it's it's a wasted time right you're gonna be sleeping anyway you might as well make eight hours of progress in the game and if you don't do that over and over and over again well if you do that three days in a row you're 24 hours behind right you're literally a whole day behind somebody else so always make sure that you everything is is running before you go to sleep and ideally you do want to spend down your action points as well let's end the video by opening up these tickets we'll start with the with the basic one let's start with the basic one let's start with the, the regular ticket who are we getting baby maverick okay we got some maverick medals oh that actually reminds me this is a bonus tip you guys get this one for free the other reason that you want to do rocket missions not just for these aluminum cans and for the alloy plates so you can upgrade the, the rocket um, but you also want to do this because you get the uh, medals for maverick so he is a purple fighter he's difficult to get relatively speaking but you're guaranteed medals of him just by doing the rocket missions so free medals for a purple fighter uh hello it's a no-brainer you want to do these all the time all right let's use this premium ticket let's see what we get ladies and gentlemen let's see what we get let's press that button i'm really hoping for oh, wait a minute oh my god oh my god it's a lord okay all right I th all right i thought it was gonna be a summon it wasn't a summon it was just a metal Ooh, we have a bundle hmm i've never seen this bundle before i'm gonna take a screenshot of this eventually later down the line i'm gonna do some guides talking about which bundles are worth purchasing this one i i have no idea if, how this compares in value to some of the other ones that show up in the shop so i'll do those comparisons a different day but that is interesting i don't know what prompted this to pop up maybe it was just the fact that i used a premium ticket or maybe because i got a, a yellow or a, a golden medal i don't know six out of ten baby six out of ten we're working towards you man that's a huge shotgun and i'm ready for it anyway if you guys have made it all the way to the end of this video hopefully i have earned your subscription make sure you click the sub button down below click that bell to be notified the next time that i upload a video to youtube comment down below any other tips that you have for this game i'm still learning just like you guys and of course any questions drop them down in the comment section below on your way down there smack that like button it takes a fraction of a second and it helps on my channel a ton finally a lot of you guys have been asking me which server i'm playing on i'm playing on 1102 omicron i'm in the purple horde okay so if you want to play with me make a character on that server and join the purple horde i'm in the alliance uh, i think it's literally just called age of apes yeah it's aoa you'll know it's me because i got my uh my youtube link here in the in the in the info if you've somehow made it all the way to the end of this video and you don't even play age of apes there is a link in the description below if you click that link you can download age of apes absolutely for free right now it's live on the google play store and it's coming to iphone and ios sometime in august i have an iphone as well and i really want to play it on my phone so i'm hoping that it comes very soon if you're like me and you have an iphone but you want to play this game there will be a link in the description to download the blue Sacks emulator that's the emulator that i use right now on my computer you can see my cursor on the screen this is my favorite android emulator for pc i absolutely love it and i'm having a blast playing age of apes on my computer and as always blue stacks is free so click that link in the description if you're interested my social media links are in the description as well so my instagram and my twitter and i have a discord down below where you can join and reach out to me if you have any other questions about this game or if you want to meet other players in other games as well finally i do have a twitch where i live stream every single week and 
last night when I live streamed, I popped open Age of Apes and we were playing it a little bit on stream and chat seemed to find the game rather enjoyable. So if you don't want to miss that, follow me on Twitch as well. With that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching. This has been Omni Arc. I will talk to you guys again soon. Peace.